Welcome to another edition of Tech Fireside Chats with your host, Joel Martin. Take it away, Joel. Hello. Hello. Happy Wednesday. Hello. I like your little intro there. That was Thank very you. fancy. Yeah. I feel so so energetic when I when it plays. I just want to just chat with people and drink coffee. That's why I love to. Hello, oh, hello. We have Marilyn Mead from Senior Director, Marketing Director of Winmo, right? List Partners. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Coming to us live from sunny Southern California. We're exactly in California. Costa Mesa, kind of like the border of Newport Beach and Costa Mesa. Oh, such a such a dreadful place. Oh my God, that's just terrible. I I remember you when you were a New York girl. Yeah, that's right. This is Southern California is not a bad place to ride out the pandemic. I, I made the move at the right time, I think. For, for those watching, we are recording during the pandemic, still in the middle of the pandemic, but uh, there's lots of things. We're healthy. We're lots of things to celebrate. And I have a good friend on the line today. So cheers. Cheers to that. You have a drink? Cheers. Cheers. Oh, 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 water. How oh, healthy. How California of you. <laughs> Yeah, you're my my event buddy. We were, you know, I'd always see you at A and A and MMA and DPAA, and we don't have those things in person. We still do virtually, right? Virtually. Like, we're, we're in the virtual world. Hold on, hold on. Virtually. So it's nice to talk to you. It's nice to get a chance to catch up with you. Wait, wait. wait. For those who don't know these this terminology, we sound like doctors here. Um, American National Association of Advertisers, right? Yes. Or is it? Is it? Yes, National Advertisers. National Association? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I need to look this up. Association of National Advertisers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mole Marking Association. Props to my girl Dina over there. Right. Um, and, um, and we're talking about the Digital Out of Home Association Video Everywhere Summit, right? Where we get to hang out. You just did a podcast. We're that. about to do. We're about to do a webinar. With webinar. Them. Webinar. Okay. Please log into that webinar and check it out. Everything you need to learn about programmatic marketing and outreach to brands and agencies. Right. Okay. Out of home, uh, digital out of home. So we're going to be doing that later this month or early September. Early Fantastic. September. So for those of you who don't don't know Marilyn, and you should if you go to any of these trade shows, which are, which used to be amazing trade shows, but now we're all in the matrix, right? <laughs> We're all in the matrix. So uh, for those of you don't, don't know, and you're not in the matrix yet, um, the, the trade show industry circuit, uh, you would know Winmo because it's the leading platform. And I remember when you guys would exhibit for, next to each other, Red Books and Winmo, right? And before that, you were at uh, Advertising Database that was also acquired by right. Winmo. Yeah. So, so you have a great story. I'm going to let you tell the story. You start. You you've been there from the beginning. Why don't you tell us the Winmo story? How like one minute how this company has bought everybody, and you're like the masters of data of the matrix. The Winmo story is we are our parent parent company holding company is called List Partners, and List Partners was known for having a product called the List Online. They acquired uh, my company, my former company, Advertising Database, in 2015. Um, they had been sort of competing advertising database in the list, and we joined together and formed Winmo, which was launched in 2015. So it's been five years since that product has been on the market, and it's pretty much the gold standard in sales intelligence for the marketing and advertising industry. And we, since that time, have acquired Redbooks as well, as well as another tool called Access Confidential. So yeah, pretty Sounds much there. That sounds very confidential. It is. What is it? <laughs> I don't know if I could tell you. I might have to tell you. No. Oh, no. Ah. Access, Access Confidential, it was similar to what Winmo does, what Advertising Database did. Um, it was very specific to agencies. It was used by um, agencies. And really, the uh, I won't go too far into it, but one of the, the uh, notable things about them is that they were uh, led by Lisa Colantano. Col I never can pronounce her name right. If she's listening, Lisa, I'm so sorry. Lisa Colantuono, um, who is um, a well-known agency search executive. Um, so on their clients would get access to her, and that was a, a big benefit to them. And she's now under the List Partners umbrella, so we all work together. So how does that... 
sorry, how, how, I think a little lag there. People are ordering in their, their scooters or food. Um, how's that compared to Kandar or Pathmatics or um, Rainmaker or Zoom Info? What, what, what's different about Winmo? So Kantar and Pathmatics are actually sources that we draw from. So um, from a media measurement perspective, we actually include a lot of uh, data and information from leading media measurement companies. So what Winmo does is we take budgets, ad budgets, we track brands and advertisers that spend, I think in total, it's like a hundred billion in advertising that um, Winmo tracks, and we break them down into profiles that map the decision makers responsible for those budgets. So who at the brand, who at the agency is placing media, um, who at the parent company is responsible for making marketing decision make, uh, marketing investment decisions, who's hiring agencies. Um, and then we kind of tie it together in opportunity analysis. I think you're familiar, Joel, with Winmo Edge, we have a, a tool. Never, called. never used it. Never heard of it. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm, in your, I'm in your marketing video. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <what I> mean. <laughs> Joe's one of our big fans. Uh, one of our power users. Um, yeah. So Winmo Edge is because you, you know, there's thousands of contacts you could go after, and a lot of times it's a little bit overwhelming to know who to reach out to. So what Winmo Edge does is we have a team of analysts who are looking at buying signals. So we tell you when a brand is going to be launching a campaign or when a company will, is likely to be hiring new agencies. And then it kind of spoon feeds, spoon feeds that to you in little bite-sized articles every morning based on what your categories you cover or industries you cover, or what you're interested in. Interesting. Interesting. So how about, um, you know, I've had to look at uh, lead 401 discover org before they bought zoom info, right? There's a lot of information there. Are you, I see you smiling. <laughs> so are you allowed to talk about the competition? Or are, are they competition? Like who's your competition? Do you mind saying that? To some extent, lead 401 could be considered a competitor at zoom info. Um, the way that I would break it down and that I think many of our customers would talk about it is that, it, it depends on what your use case is, what your need is. Um, for for our customers, they're looking to fish for opportunities in the marketing and advertise specific to the marketing and advertising ecosystem. So they'd rather use Winmo, where it's more like fishing in a bathtub, than other resources where it would be like fishing in the ocean. Is sort of how I would break that down. Interesting. Okay. And sorry, I got I got to change the look here because. Uh... Where am I? Oh, there I am. Okay. Um, this is cool. This is good to know where you're where, where, where you've been. And so your career at, at Winmo, you've you've been like at every stage, right? I mean, I think that's an interesting thing to, to touch on. So at Winmo, I've been in the marketing department for the past five years and, and it's been an amazing experience. I did start out when I was at advertising database on the yeah. research. Well, I, I figured because they got acquired. So, I mean, you've right. been with the company. You can technically say I've been with the company because I, I'm one of their acquisitions, but now I'm right. the senior director of marketing, right? So, yeah. So I started out initially um, in sort of our content and research side. So I was covering advertising campaigns, agency hires, Excel, uh, executive hires, things like that. Um, and then sort of morphed into or created a marketing role at Advertising Database um, maybe a year before we were acquired and then joined the marketing team at what is now Winmo. And yeah, here we are. So Winmo, digital, I, I know you guys can do a uh, really interesting way of, of looking at the data. You can do like spend by DMA and digital spend, which is very interesting, right? I can see how much Apple is spending in Miami, for example. Right. Um, Am I able to, um, are there other forms of research that I can do before I approach the agencies? Like what agency is buying on behalf of Apple? Sure. You can see, okay. it depends on what you're looking for. You can see what agency is buying for Apple, who the media planner, media buyer is. Um, you can look at what their ads look like, what their current strategy looks like. You could look at their social demographics. What's the breakdown of their um, social audience so that you can show how your offering fits in, maybe fills a gap that they're not currently indexing highly with. 
Um, and yeah, like you mentioned, spend. And we have some really great, especially in the digital space, like up to the minute spend data that people can look at to sort of utilize as a trigger. A lot of what our customers are looking for is not necessarily this brand launched a campaign because at that point, the dollars, the majority of dollars, as you know, Joel, are already spent. Yeah. You know, so that's very reactive. So what our customers are looking for is what are, what are you laughing at? Uh, because I laughed for a second. I'm back. Sorry, I had to close the window. <laughs> this is hard. I'm director, uh, taking questions from people at the same time. I'm like, no, no, ask the question later. So I, I might, I might let somebody in this this chat. I'm, I'm, I was okay. they're messaging me on Discord. I'm like, okay. Um, no, keep going. I'm sorry, I interrupted. It's so rude of me. I this... forgot. I completely forgot what I was saying. Sorry. By the way, I love your virtual background. It looks beautiful. My virtual background, you like my kitchen? <laughs> that's your actual kitchen. Okay, it's real. Oh my God, it's like the most organized. That's, a, that's so organized. It's beautiful. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> As you can see, I don't want to show my mess. So I have my virtual. No, this is really that's my kitchen. Yeah, that's, that's where Joel hangs out. <laughs> that's where, it's, it's so hot in here. Oh my gosh. It's, I'm on, it my hair's on fire. Really almost Harry Potter-esque, I want to say, or something. It looks like a, <laughs> out of a storybook. Or of a, who is like, like a Thomas Kincaid painting? <laughs> Thank you, I guess. Um, I, I realized you were, you started at Pepsi. I did. I had a, a brief stint at Pepsi. It was my first job out of college. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, I know, you're a, you're a Coke guy. I, I Coke, uh, Coke, you cut me, I believe Coca-Cola. It was my first job. They paid for my college. I have a picture of their former CEO, Roberto Goizueta, on my wall. He's uh, <laughs> sorry, it's Coke. It's Coke or nothing, right? Um, I'm a Pepsi girl. Yeah, I you were great until until. No, I'm kidding. You're awesome. I'm. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, swipe. <laughs> the, the the soda wars. By the way, did you hear? There's um. So they're comparing now, there's the Soda Wars, Coke versus yeah. Pepsi. Yeah. I'm totally digressing now, but there's- okay, um, That's what we do here. There's, okay, cool. So we there's- the, we're, in, we're in the matrix. The, dr the drink wars where it's um, White Claw versus, what's the other one? Um, are you talking about uh, about hard- Hard, hard cider. Soda? So, oh, hard cider, okay. I thought it was like hard club soda. I was like, what? Seltzer water. No, it's um, White Claw versus Truly, I think the other one's okay. called. But yeah, I was reading about that recently. That's the new Pepsi versus Coke. Oh, oh. Yeah. I, I, it's like, which hard seltzer? But you can't go to bars anymore. So it's like, really, what do so I pick at the, the checkout lane? They're at home. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's building bars. and it, It's like a New Jersey thing, bars at home or something in their garages. <laughs> it's, it's a new trend. I, I'm not sure I want a bunch of strangers in my garage drinking during the age of COVID. Yeah, that's probably not. <laughs> um, okay, so so I I love getting back to what you do, selling data, right? We're all in the matrix, special effects. Um, red pill. <laughs> red pill. So, and I've seen you in the different worlds. I've seen you in the mobile association. How you talk to mobile marketers that are trying to sell banner ads and how they approach people. Do you have any advice for uh, somebody such as myself who might go out there and meet with uh, a brand or or a CMO? Uh, to get their attention in the age of virtual, right? Because they can't go out there and see the screens. Um, is there, do you have any any pointers there? You mean it for for a salesperson? Who yeah, like, like what, what what should they do? I mean, you guys have been helping people, helping your clients, right? The last few months. We I've have seen some Number one, do your research. Okay. And their strategy. Understand what they're doing. There's nothing worse. I've even been, you know, as a marketing director, I've been on the receiving end of outreach where you, clearly the person hasn't done their homework to understand what you do. Um, so do your do your research, understand what their current strategy looks like and quickly explain what you can add to that or how you can elevate it somehow or what they're missing and how you can provide that. And I would also say um, people underestimate the importance of catering your outreach to an individual based on their personality. We actually have, I don't know if you've seen this role in Winmo. We have personality index, do you want Do you want to share it? Or, or we, we can leave it as a mystery. Yeah. Okay. 
um, leave people wanting more. Um, but it's it's from a company called Crystal. Um, we integrate their data yeah. into Winmo, and it'll tell you, you know, I'll go to a profile and it'll say, you know, for CMO, get to the point quickly, you know, craft your email in two sentences or less, or it'll say this person is very informal, use informal language, um, don't use data, don't use data, use bullet points. So it'll give you- Have you tried doing that with emojis? Like this one likes caviar emoji and this one likes hot dogs. It's- <laughs> formal, exactly. formal versus informal. That's actually one of the things that is included in the personality insights. I noticed the other day I was looking oh, yeah. at it said use emojis and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, good. Like he's definitely New York language, you know. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> yeah. New York CEO. <laughs> right. <laughs> interesting. Um, yes, I've seen it. I think it's a great feature. Uh, and I think that's a science. I'm sorry, no, it's an art, not a science. That's what I want to say. Um, do you craft a two sentence email? Because I've had, I've worked with people that wanted two sentence emails for everything, despite the fact that it was a topic that required a two hour conversation or a five page report. And then I've worked with people that want a five page report for every single thing that you talk about. Um, and then I've also worked with people that don't care about grammar, they'll, they'll take emojis. Oh. They just, they, they, they put finding gifts in their emails and, you know, this is like at the highest level. And then other people that you better check that email 10 times with Grammarly before you send it, because they will just criticize every grammatical error horror that I write. Well, um, they need it. Instantly. Yeah. They see a spelling mistake or something. So that's, I think people really underestimate the importance of tailoring your outreach based on who that person is. And it's great if you know them or have some interaction with them, prior, but if you don't, if it's cold, you know, if it's cold outreach, then a tool like Winmo is great to sort of see, get the bullet points on who you're communicating with and psychologically what they're likely to respond to. So you can cater your outreach and stand out. Um, something Nola Weinstein, also a Coke uh, scholar who's at Twitter told me uh, when I showed her some of my videos, she was like, Joel, your videos need to be less than 30 seconds, 20 seconds at most, like your marketing videos for your emails. It's like, really? So he's like, yeah, yeah, these two minute videos, nobody's gonna watch them. It's like, are you, are you sure? And and is there is there advice now, like when you send out an email, do you find that those, those embedded videos have to be shorter and shorter, like goldfish ads? So somebody might watch them. Somebody yeah. might like the two minute video. I, I It's really a matter of personal preference. I. No. Even from a Winmo, our marketing perspective, I I think shorter and to the point because our audience is, is typically salespeople. Yeah. Salespeople are very bottom line, you know, spell it out quickly, get to it quickly. But for different audiences, that might be, you know, there might be a different dynamic and they, they might respond well to longer form content. I, I feel like it also has to do with the subject. Like, I, I love a few minutes ago. I showed you uh, we, before we started recording. I shared the uh, the self driving scooter video, and and I loved watching your reaction. Like what? It was like what? What is this? What? Like it was just great. I, I, that was like yeah, it was natural, right? Like drones, right? Um, and I think it's hard. Like even at Code Firm, one of the things we do so many cool things. And it's hard to tell people, well, you know, we've done stuff for theme parks and amusement centers. And uh, here's something we did for a drone, but we don't, we don't make the drone. We just make the code, right? And I think that's hard to convey sometimes unless you make like these brief, like shocking 20 second, 30, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to get people's attention during COVID when, you know, not your house, cause your house is very neat and organized, but most houses have like a bunch of dogs and kids and- the Kids and, running around in the background. Yeah. You know, the cat is like climbing on somebody's shoulder. Oh yeah, yeah he's throwing a fire cause he's being ignored all week. You know, it's like crazy stuff. I will bring up, so I had a conversation recently with, um, I, I don't want to get her name wrong. Kate Prescott is I think her name. She's at um, Kale Group, which does like Vans Warp Tour and all these live experiential events. You and I were talking before the call just about how that industry has been shot before, yeah. and they're all trying to reimagine virtual events. This is what the, is what the experiential agency looks, world looks like now. It's, it's the apocalypse. It's been it's destroyed. Craziness. But I was asking her because they actually did pull off a really cool uh, virtual event recently, focused on mental health. 
and they did it right at the height of the start of the pandemic and lockdown. Um, and I asked her, you know, when you're reaching out to potential sponsors right now, brand sponsors, how are you breaking through? How are you getting people's attention? I thought she had some really good advice because I like to fight weird. What'd you with say? What'd you say? She said, fight weird with weird. You know, oh, I like that. Get, get all, and I, I can't remember her exact words after that, but I remember fight weird with weird. And she said, be really personal in your outreach. Um, be memorable. Bring up the fact that this is a super weird time. There you see, I feel like you you knew where it was going, you had it ready. <laughs> that should be that's video. how I call everybody at home. That should be your next video, your <laughs> next marketing video, Joel. You should be wearing the mask. Gotta stand out. You know that. Everybody knows yeah. me at the events. I now have to stand out in the videos and, and bring attention to what you're doing, right? Side note, we did yep. something really cool recently Tell me. that um do you know so cameo? That's another yeah. really cool way to start. cameo. Right? I yes. I think the first I heard about it was last year. Um, I just love the fact that one of my 80s childhood heroes might need my 25 bucks so badly that he'll record a phone message for me. Yes. So <laughs> we did we did um we did a cameo and it's James yeah. Vanderbeek. Oh, I love him. I yeah. was very excited about. Actually, it. from uh, the B in the apartment. Okay. Anyways, not from uh, not from Dawson's Creek, but I like him from the, the other show they did. He's done a lot of cool stuff. He's actually done a lot of like indie stuff. Yeah. So he did a, a little Winmo video and and stuff like what? that. Yeah. I'll send it to you. I'll send it All right. to you. All right. Good. Good. Um, but stuff like that is really, I think critical in breaking through the clutter right now too. You know, whatever you need the money because there's no more comic cons. So they can't take pictures and hug their fans anymore yeah. or go yeah. to after parties with them. So they need money. I mean, that, that was all pocket cash that they would just put in bags and duffel bags, like after the show. You ever yeah. been to, have you been to a con? Yes. You have? Uh, yes. And there's people there. I There's like, like you, like you're saying, there's people there that I wouldn't expect to be at Comic Con who are just signing autographs and oh yeah, people from commercials, you know, yeah. the dead celebrities, everybody's there. It's awesome. That's great. That's great. <laughs> so any any last thoughts because we're running on time here. Um, what are you reading? What are you watching during this uh, pandemic? And I mean, we can't get together like we used to at these tech events, but Martech World is still here. You're doing a great job, and thank you for all the things that Winmo's doing, and and I love your posts. Uh, but maybe share something personal, like uh, what are you reading, what are you watching, streaming? I wish I had some good. I, I've been listening to a ton of music. Um, oh, really? Like what? I there's okay, so there's a really cool Sturgill Simpson album that. Do you listen to Sturgill? No, I'm just writing it down. Write it down. Uh, <laughs> What else? What else am I listening to? I'm like drawing a blank. This is kind of we are scientists. Like in the last like two weeks, all the, I've been, that's all I've been streaming. I think all their albums. So a lot of music. I will say on a just on a professional note, there's so much online content available right now. Like there is so much. All these shows that you and I were going to before are reimagining themselves virtually. Advertising Week is coming up, mm. and that's going to be one. So I think that though Mirin was another, they're one of our partners. They, they do an agency new business summit. I think it's a great way to stay connected with people and stay connected with what's going on in the industry. Cause we're not going into offices. We're not learning right. the same way we would before. So definitely you saw how the drones are taking over too, right? So there's, the there's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The drones are taking out. Uh, there's a, there was a story. Did you see this about a drone that walked a dog for a man in Europe? Well, no, it sounds great. I love it. I thought it was fantastic. It's like an episode of Black Mirror. Black <laughs> Mirror, I've been watching. That's a good one. Oh, that's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Family, family entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I hear you're you're going to take a e scooter ride in the next couple of days. Yes. Very excited. Okay. So wear a helmet or be safe. Don't don't do any tricks. Don't do any crazy. Nothing no, crazy. No. Okay. Good. No uh, drinking. The trick car, no ollies, no 360s. I don't know. Wow. What you got the, the terminology is. down. Wow. Skateboarding. I don't know what they are for scooters, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are the very, very similar. But I just no half pipe. You know, 
<laughs> that would be awesome, though. <laughs> any, any recommendations for anybody looking to get into MarTech, into the industry, uh, how they can stand out, make a name for themselves? Like you've you've made a name for yourself, and I and I I love that I always see you, and you're always up to something great, and it's it's great being your friend. So um, even though we're literally across the country from each other right now, it's great hanging out. Um, what, do you have any advice for somebody? Not that much younger, but some some younger people trying to get in now during the age of COVID. How do they stand out? What would you tell them? I would say stuff like this, like reach out to your connection. And now is the time people are being super experimental with content, with podcasts. Winmo, we launched a podcast in the last couple months and, and that's been going well. So people are being really experimental. So you don't have to be super polished. Um, okay. Have a podcast, um, do a video series. Um, Experiment with content and the standards aren't as high as they were because everyone's experimenting right now. So I would say to people, experiment. See Sounds like college. I love it. <laughs> I made you laugh. And with that, that's the end of the show. <laughs> Yay. You. I'll have you. In, you're going to join me again, right? Yes. We'll do this again. For sure. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> I, I, I saw a lag there. It's lunchtime. Everybody's buying food again. Oh, gosh. They, all, they really do slow down the internet in my neighborhood. What is this with the food and people needing to eat? It's terrible. Mobile apps. Everybody's on their mobile app. Thank yeah. you so much, Marilyn Mead, Marilyn Mead from Winmo. Ciao. Thanks, Joel. Bye. Thanks for watching and join us next week on Tech Fireside Chats.